and welcome back to the Turdferg Network. Today's video is actually a buoyancy equation, our buoyancy problem submitted by a member of the Turdferg viewing audience today. So I feel pretty special at this moment working this problem. So anyway, it was a problem they had on their last test and they needed it work before they took a final exam. They didn't understand how to work it. Well, here's the thing, a buoyancy question, and most time when you work a buoyancy question, most people are thinking about buoyancy in terms of something out floating in the water. This is the question that they're usually familiar with working, is something that looks like this. Well, the same thing applies to like a blimp, and please don't judge me on, I have no idea what the rear end of a blimp looks like. I never realized it till just now, but I've never really looked at a blimp that close. But anyway, this problem is about blimp, and it gives us, if we read the problem, it gives us a volume of the blimp. I'm going to write volume of that object. It gives us this volume, and it gives us some stuff about density, and it doesn't really tell us density. I, I like how this problem did that. It's actually trying to make you do some calculations here. But here's the thing. If you're going to do this problem about blimp in the air, you've still got to understand an object in the water. And in this case, the blimp is submerged. Now, that's important to me because here's the thing. This blimp, let's see what we can do here. This blimp, I'm the blimp, it's submerged. And what is it submerged in? Air. So the fluid actually lifting in this problem, the fluid that's lifting is air. So air is what is providing the lift on this blimp, whereas if you're in water, it's actually the water that's actually providing the lift in this question. So let's go back. And again, we've got to think about something. This blimp is submerged. Why do I keep stressing that? Well, it's so important because that's that's, that, that tells us something huge. If that blimp is submerged, then the volume of the object itself is equal to the volume of the fluid that's displaced. Because when you write, when you write the equation for buoyancy, what is the equation for buoyancy? Buoyancy is equal to rho fluid V fluid G. That's your basic buoyancy equation. Well, that tells me that the volume of the object is the same as the fluid because it's completely submerged in this water. So when I look at it, here's what I got. Here's what I got to do. I got to think back to good old first, you know, couple of chapters of physics. I've got a buoyancy pushing up on that balloon, but pulling down. And it says we're trying to hang something from this balloon. And we're looking for the mass of what, I'm just going to put MLG. I'm looking for that mass I can lift. But here's the other thing. This problem, you've got to also take into account the mass of the helium that's pulling this thing down. And this is where the problem's actually wrong. You should also have another MG. You should have a mass for the blimp itself to have to calculate in this. And this problem is actually acting like the blimp to get the professor's answer. They're acting like this is a massless blimp, which is actually kind of odd, to be honest. But anyway, that's a little flaw in the problem, to be honest. But anyway, it's a typical buoyancy question, which means when you go to write it out, the equation is actually going to be rho f vf g minus mass of the helium, G, minus mass that you are trying to lift, G. And all that's equal to zero. We didn't say we're accelerating, just attempting to lift. A little too far there. Now, this problem gave us a bunch of little bull crap. But again, it gave us this. It's submerged. So that means the volume of fluid is the volume of the blimp itself. So... In other words, my only volume in this problem is this 200. So I've got that. But it goes to a little trouble up here. It tells me this. It tells me that the density of air is 1 800ths the density of the density of water. And then it tells me that the density of helium is equal to 1 7th 
the density of air. Well, that's easy. You see, this problem was making sure that you knew the density of water. So it was making sure that you knew the density of water, which is easy, is a thousand. So that means the density of air is a thousand over eight hundred, or that would be one point two five, and the unit would be kilogram meter cube. And then that means that air would be one seventh of that density, kilogram meter cubed over seven, which that would be point one eight. So there is the density of both air, and now we have the density of helium as well. And we had to have both these densities. We had to have both the densities in this problem. So we've got those densities. So let's go down here. The, by the way, the physics is basically over because the fluid that we're trying to float in is air. So the density of the fluid would be 1.25 times the volume of the object, which is 200. And now look at something. G, G, G. The G's all cancel out, so I can get rid of that. So now we can go back. Minus the mass of the helium. Wait a second. It didn't give me the mass of the helium. But here's the thing. Density is mass over volume. So if I want to find the mass of the helium, all I'm going to do is take the density of helium, 0.18, and times that by the volume of the helium. Well, the volume is that same 200 we had before. So all I'm doing here is in place of this mass, I'm just doing density. I'm taking the density of helium times the volume of helium, which would be 200. And then this becomes minus mass that we can lift. And all that's equal to zero. So 1.25 times 200... Uh, I'm not even breaking out a calculator for this. Uh, this would be 200 and a quarter of 200. So this is 250 minus 0.18 times 200. Well, that's 36 divided by 100. So this would be, or excuse me, blah, blah, blah. sorry, I can't think of what I'm doing here. But anyway, the answer would just be 36 because the 100 canceled into 200. And that would be equal to ml, which means 214 kilograms is my mass that I can lift. And this was a pretty straightforward type of buoyancy questions. Just remember, on pretty much any buoyancy question, pretty much any buoyancy question, you're usually, usually you're just looking for this. Rho F, V, F, G and then you've got a mg going this way. This problem tried to make it harder because you had two mgs. You had a mass for the helium, and then you had the helium, and then you had the mass that you could lift in it. That's what they tried to do. But a basic buoyancy question is usually just this. Rho f vfg minus mg equals zero. And here's the thing. This one, again, had two MGs, and that's what it tried to do to make it harder. But usually, then, all you're going to do is the variations of this problem look like this. Rho F V O G. If it's, and we do that, this whole V F equals V O whenever something is submerged. And then sometimes you work a problem that's only partially submerged. And look at this little trick. When something's partially submerged, I'm, I set it equal to AH. So I still have this rho F, but instead of VF or VO, I do this. AHG minus MG equals zero. We do that little trick in there. And that H is just this, like if you had something in water like this, and it's not completely submerged. The H is actually just this. It's just how deep this object is in the water, and that's a very common thing to ask. Now, the only other variations you see to this basic buoyancy is what we did in this one, and that's going into this mass and substituting for mass density times volume in place of that mass. 
So you could end up with this rho f a h g minus density of your object minus v o g. But this is it. The entire chapter of buoyancy is wrapped up into this one set of equations right here. So pretty much any buoyancy problem we could work based on that. So say for example, I'll throw one extra just quick problem in here. Say you had a block of wood and this block, this, say that this block has a density of 0.8 and it's in water. Da, 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 da. So this one's in water. Water has a density of 1,000. So there's your density of the water. So, and excuse me, that wood would have a density of 0.8 times water. So this has, would say specific gravity. We'd say it has a density of 800. <coughs> and then what this problem might ask you to do, it might give you the volume. It might even give you length, width, and height. Let's say it says the volume of this block of wood is 5 meters cubed, and it might tell us that the area, let's see, the area of this block is, let's say this, let's say it's a block that's 2 by 2. Why would the problem give us this? It's so they could find that area, and so let's say that the area is 4 meters square, and so there it gives me an area in there. What it might very well do is ask me, how deep is it in the water? Well, all I'd do is I'd look at this problem and go, okay, so we got we got a buoyancy question, rho f, v f, g. This should be your like first impulse of what to write on buoyancy. Then you look at it and you're like, all right, it's not completely submerged. So I'm going to use a h in place of that v. So I'm going to end up with rho f, and again, that's the fluid that you're in, like in this case, water, a h g minus. And then I'm going to look at them and be like, well, crap, they didn't give me the mass of this object. But wait a second. I know the density and volume of the object. So instead of mass, I'm going to rho o v o. It gave me the density and volume of the object, and that can give me mass. So I'm going to write rho o v o, and then take the g. And the cool thing about this is G's cancel out. And so the density of the water is 1,000 times the area, which is 4, times H minus 800 times the volume of the entire object, 0. And next thing you know, I've got my answer to this problem at this point. So we got 4,000 H equals... 40, and oh my goodness, check this out, H would be equal to 1, so we solve for our H, so that's how deep it's in the water, it's not, now notice something, that's how deep it's in the water, that is not how tall the object is, it's just how much of it was underwater, but anyway, that's a great summary of all things buoyancy, good luck, and... Uh, well, just good luck. So take care, America. Turd Ferg's always out here on patrol.